So this video is to talk about DNA replication. DNA replication is important during S phase of mitosis. We talked about this before when we were discussing cell division, and we just very briefly mentioned this step, and we said, hey, the DNA is copied during S phase. And then we kind of moved on to G2 and talked about other things that were happening during division. Now we're kind of revisiting this concept, and we're going to look at it in more detail. So for starters, I just want to explain this image. This is actually from your textbook and it does a very, very good job showing this concept. What it demonstrates is that DNA isn't copied from one end or the other. It's actually starting near the middle and then extending to either end. So if we look at this carefully, you've got uncopied DNA at the top and at the bottom, and you can see it is split in the center, and it's being replicated on either side. So we're getting a new copy of DNA forming on the right, and then a new copy of DNA forming on the left. One of the things I really like about this image is it backs this up with a scanning electron image of the same concept. So this is showing the old DNA up here, the old DNA at the bottom, and then the two new strands that are forming, one on either side. Now when it comes to actually showing this in your notes, there's ways of practicing DNA replication. What you have to know is what pairs together on the inside here. Now if you look at the key down at the bottom, it represents the different bases with different letters and uh, different colors. So adenine, for starters, is green. So if we're looking for one of the green ones in here, we've got adenine right there, and if you notice, it always binds up with a yellow one. No matter where it is in the DNA molecule, green always binds with yellow. That's because adenine always bonds with thymine, and then it works the same way with the blue and the red ones. Cytosine and guanine are also always bonding together as well. Now I'll take a minute to talk about the reason for that. And it has to do with the actual structure of these molecules. So look at this one here for a moment. Now, if we're looking at what this is representing, it's still the same model of DNA, but this is going to show us why A bonds with T and C bonds with G. If you notice in the picture here, it shows them as having similar shapes, kind of like puzzle pieces fitting together. And that's not a bad way of thinking about it, but that's not the actual reason why these two things are bonding together. If you look at the image on the right, it shows adenine and thymine bonding together, and that's because they share two hydrogen bonds. If we're looking at cytosine and guanine, they're sharing three hydrogen bonds. So this is the reason that these two things pair together. Another thing to understand is part of the reason of the spiral nature of DNA is the fact that these things are not the same size. If we look at adenine, it's much bigger than thymines. It's called a purine. These are pyrimidines because the, uh, the purines are larger. So it works the same way with the guanine. Guanine is much bigger than cytosine. So it's just the pattern of the DNA molecules binding together that ends up giving it that uh, spiral shape. But the most important thing to remember from this is it's the bonds. It's the bonds that make these things go together. Uh, this is referred to as Chargoff's rule because there was a scientist named Erwin Chargoff who discovered that no matter what species he sampled the DNA from, they always had roughly the same amount of adenine and the same amount of thymine, and then the same amount of cytosine and the same amount of guanine. So he knew for some reason they went together, but he wasn't exactly sure why. Uh, the last step involves actually practicing this. Once you've done a few of these, they become very easy. It's almost like second nature. So when it comes to doing these DNA replication problems in class, what I'll always do for you is provide you with a section of DNA. And these are the individual bases from the model of DNA that actually need to be copied. And so if you think back to the image on the previous page where the DNA was being split up the middle, this is part of the original strand of DNA which is being replicated on the other side to give us the new strand. So the trick to this is to go back and remember which letters pair together. If we go back to Chargoff's rule, A always binds with T and C always binds with G. One easy way to remember this is that C and G kind of have a similar shape, so it's easy to associate those two together. So now if we go back up to our section of DNA, see the first one is an A. So just remember back to A binding with T, and we'll start matching these up. So we've got a T across from that one, a T again. We know that C goes with G, G goes with C, C goes with G, T goes with A. So the order of them really doesn't matter. T going with A again, going back to like this one. You know, it doesn't matter which side they're on. They still match up with one another. So back to the other way. T there, C going with G, 
G going with C, and then T matching up with A. So once you could do a short section like this one, I mean, you could easily do a hundred of these, no problem. Nothing really changes with these. So overall, replication is pretty straightforward. It's transcription that we'll do next, which is going from DNA to RNA that makes things a little bit more challenging. So if you're done with this video, transcription is the one to watch next.